Hi everyone, myself Dr. P. Soumya, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, I am going to cover the topic, uh, definition of ecosystem, scope, importance of ecosystem and classification of ecosystem. So, in this uh, session, I am going to cover the topic. So, the, what is the definition of ecosystem, scope of ecosystem, importance of ecosystem and classification of ecosystem. So, first ecosystem, the term it is first coined by A.G. Tansley. So, this ecosystem, ecosystem it is consisting two words. So, it is consisting two words, echo and system. Echo and system. Echo means environment, system means interaction. Environment, interaction, it is nothing but ecosystem. Ecosystem, it is divided into two two words, echo, system, echo means environment, system means interaction. So, this is the definition of ecosystem. First, what is ecosystem? A ecosystem, it is a biological environment. Ecosystem, it is nothing but biological environment. It consisting of all living organisms as well as non-living organisms. So, it, the ecosystem, it is a biological environment consisting of all living organisms or biotic components in a particular area and the non-living or abiotic components such as air, soil, water, sunlight and with, with, with which the organism interact. So, here the interaction with the environment ecosystem it means environment interaction with the, all the living organisms and non-living organisms. So, ecosystem means it is a biological environment. Ecosystem, it is nothing but an environment that is biological environment. It consisting of all the living organisms as well as all the non-living organisms. Examples of non-living organisms are soil, air, sunlight and heat, water, uh, all are the non-living things. So, an ecosystem, it is formed by the interaction between all living as well as non-living things. Ecosystem, it is, a, uh, it, it is formed by the interaction between all living and non-living organisms. Ecosystem, it is a complex set of relationship among the living sources, habitats, resi residents of an area, in a specific area. So, it includes plants, trees, animals. Fishes, birds, microorganisms, air, water, soil and people. So, means it includes all the non-living as well as living things. So, it includes living things such as plants, trees, animals, birds, fishes, microorganisms and non-living things like air, water, soil and people. Air, water, soil. So, people also come under living organism. So, ecosystem, it is nothing but it is in a biological environment which consisting of all the living organisms and non-living organisms. So, here the interaction with the living and non-living organisms with the environment, it is, known, it is known as ecosystem. Scope of ecology. So, ecology, it is a study which is helps us to tackle problems like pollution, like, like environment problems. It is the ecology, this, it, is, it is a study which helps us to tackle the problems and tackle the environmental problems like pollution, environmental pollution, floods, ozone depletion ozone depletion and global warming. So, these are the major problems in uh, of environment. So, this is called the ecology, the study which is helps us to tackle the problem, problems uh, like uh, environmental problems such as pollution, floods and ozone depletion and global warming. So, it is very necessary to in maintaining ecological balance. So, ecology it is used for the Maintaining the ecological balance and it is used to understanding different cycles like oxygen cycle, nitrogen, sulfur and carbon etc. So, this is, uh, ecology, it is very necessary in maintaining low, uh, ecological balance and it is useful for understanding different cycles. So, we have different cycles like oxygen cycle, nitrogen cycle, sulfur and carbon cycles. So, this is very important, this is very useful for understanding different cycles. 
and it is helps in protecting flora and fauna which are present in our ecosystem and we can maintain balance in nature and can prevent ecological disasters and it is a, it is playing an important role in human welfare ecology it is playing an important role so in human welfare uh, agriculture conservation of wildlife conservation of wildlife so here it is ecology it is playing an important role in human welfare agriculture conservation of wildlife so the importance of uh, ecosystem is so ecosystems are communities of living things ecosystems these are biological environments or these are the communities of living things and ecosystems are essential to human life providing us with the innumerable and invaluable services ecosystems uh, these are the communities of living things and the ecosystems are essential to human life so essential to human life these are providing ecosystems are providing so with the new innumerable and invaluable services they are ecosystems are giving invaluable services to the human life so they are providing ecosystems are providing innumerable and invaluable services to the human life so these ecosystems are very essential to the human life so these ecosystem services are the goods and services derived from natural and managed ecosystems upon which human welfare depends and include everything from clean air and water to food and fuel so here this importance of ecosystems are these ecosystem services are these are the goods and services so ecosystem services are the goods and services which are derived from natural and managed ecosystems upon which human welfare depends and include everything from clean air and water to food and fuel this is the importance of ecosystem so second uh, types of ecosystem so types of ecosystem so ecosystem this is divided into two types aquatic ecosystem terrestrial ecosystem aquatic ecosystem terrestrial ecosystem so this aquatic ecosystem it is divided into two types marine ecosystem fresh water ecosystem so ecosystem it is divided into two types so so that is aquatic ecosystem terrestrial ecosystem so aquatic ecosystem again divided into two types marine ecosystem and fresh water ecosystem so here this terrestrial ecosystem again divided into four types forest ecosystem deserts ecosystem grassland ecosystem and tundra ecosystem so terrestrial ecosystem it is again divided into four types forest ecosystem deserts ecosystem grassland ecosystem and tundra ecosystem so ecosystem it is divided into two types aquatic and terrestrial aquatic again divided into two types and terrestrial ecosystem divided into four types so coming to the aquatic ecosystem so an aquatic ecosystem it is an ecosystem in a body of water aquatic means water so in aquatic ecosystem it is an ecosystem of a, in a body of water so it is consisting of body of which is consisting of water so communities of organisms that are depend on each other so i and on their environment Uh, living at aquatic ecosystems so communities of organisms uh, these are depending upon the aquatic ecosystem so here two main types of aqu aquatic ecosystems are there so first one is marine ecosystem second one is fresh water ecosystem so two main uh, types of uh, aquatic ecosystems are there so first one is marine ecosystem second one is fresh water ecosystem marine ecosystem it is marine ecosystem are among the largest of earth aquatic ecosystems so examples includes estuaries lagoons coral reefs and the deep sea and also the sea floor the sea floor so these are the marine ecosystems examples of the marine ecosystems these are include estuaries lagoons coral reefs deep sea and sea floor so marine waters cover 2/3 of the surface of the earth 
marin water it is covering the two third of uh, surface of the earth so such places are considered ecosystems so that type of places are considered as ecosystems because the plant life supports uh, the animal life because the plant life supports animal life and animal life supports uh, plant life so that's why that places are called as ecosystems so here according to the world resource center coastal habitats account for the account for about one third of marine biological productivity so here the according to the world resource center coastal habitats account for about one third of marine biological productivity so here the issues are occur where there is a noticeable change in salinity between salt water and fresh water fresh water source issues are uh, uh, this can occur with the noticeable change in salinity between the fresh water as well as salt water so the national geographic society defines uh, defines the lagoons as uh, a shallow body body of water a shallow body of water protected from the larger body of water by sand bars or barrier islands or coral reefs so the place the lagoons are defined as shallow body of water protected from larger body of water by sand bars barrier islands or coral reefs so that place is called as lagoons so according to the national geographic society lagoons are defined as shallow body of lagoons a shallow body of water which are protected by large body of water by sand bars barrier islands and coral reefs so what are coral reefs coral reefs are one of the most well known marine ecosystems within the world coral reefs are these are the one of the most well known marine ecosystems within the world the largest being the Uh, being that of the great barrier reef great barrier reef so these reefs are composed of large coral colonies of variety of species living together so next is the deep sea the aquatic ecosystem in the marine ecosystem so the deep sea also one of the example the deep sea conquers up to 95% of the space occupied by living organisms so combined with the sea floor these two areas have it to be fully explored and have the organisms documented making this ecosystem some of the hardest to understand by the scientist so this is a food chain of marine food chain in this seaweed this is consumed by the small fish small fish to consumed by the large fish large fishes are consumed by the shark so this is the marine food chain in the marine aquatic ecosystem so second ecosystem second aquatic ecosystem is fresh water ecosystem fresh water ecosystems are subset of earth's aquatic ecosystems so they include uh, like uh, lakes ponds rivers streams springs wetlands freshwater ecosystems include lakes ponds rivers wetlands streams and springs freshwater habitats can be classified by different factors including temperature light penetration and vegetation freshwater habitats they can be classified by different factors including temperature light penetration and vegetation so freshwater ecosystems can be divided into lentic ecosystem and lotic ecosystem freshwater ecosystems are classified into lentic ecosystem and lotic ecosystem lentic ecosystems are also called as still water ecosystems lotic ecosystem means flowing water ecosystem so here the limnology it is a study about freshwater ecosystem it is a part of hydrobiology so study of study about fresh freshwater ecosystems is called is also called is called as limnology it is the one of the part of the hydrobiology 
So freshwater ecosystem, this includes uh, lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, sand springs, wetlands. So freshwater ecosystems are divided into two types, lentic ecosystems, still water ecosystem and lotic ecosystems, flowing water ecosystems. So limnology, it is a study about freshwater ecosystem. It is a part of hydrobiology. A lake ecosystem includes biotic and abiotic components. A lake ecosystem, it includes living and non-living components. So living components like plants, animals and microorganisms. So as well as abiotic or non-living components such as physical and chemical interactions. So lake ecosystem, it includes both the biotic and abiotic components. Uh, biotic components such as uh, living components, plants, uh, animals, microorganisms, non-living components like physical and chemical interactions. So lake ecosystems are prime examples of lentic ecosystems. Lake ecosystems are prime example of lentic ecosystems, still water ecosystem. River ecosystems are prime examples of lotic ecosystems and flowing water ecosystems. So a pond ecosystem, it refers to a freshwater ecosystem. Pond ecosystem, it is a, referred to the freshwater ecosystem where there are communities of organisms dependent on each other with the prevailing water environment for their nutrient nutrients and survival. So lake ecosystems are examples of lentic ecosystems, river example, river ecosystems are examples of lotic ecosystems, pond ecosystems are refers to the freshwater ecosystem. So this is about uh, uh, eco aquatic ecosystems and types of aquatic ecosystem. Next ecosystem is uh, Terrestrial ecosystem. So terrestrial ecosystem, it is a type of ecosystem found only on biomes also known as beds. So terrestrial ecosystem, it is a type of uh, ecosystem found only on biomes. So also known as uh, beds. The biome means uh, biome, it is a community of plants and animals and that have common characteristics for, for the environment they exist in. So they can be found over a range of continents. They can be found over a range of continents. Bio means it is a community of plants. Bio means it is a community of plants and animals that have common characteristics. The common characteristics for the environment which they are present, which they are existing. So, they can be found over a range of uh, continents. So, terrestrial ecosystem, it is a type of ecosystem which is found only on biomes. Biomes are nothing but community of plants and animals which are having common characteristics. So, four primary terrestrial ecosystems exist. So, forest ecosystem, desert ecosystem, grassland ecosystem and tundra ecosystem. So, we have four types of uh, uh, terrestrial ecosystems, forest ecosystem, desert ecosystem, grassland ecosystem and dendra ecosystem. So India also, India is also rich in its fauna. So we know that India, it is rich in fauna and flora. So in India, it has approximately 90,000 animal species. India has approximately 90,000 animal species, 2,000 species of birds. 90,000 uh, 90, animal species, 2,000 bird species and they constitute 13% of world's total. So they constitute 13% uh, of the world's total and also India has 2,500 species of fish which is nearly 12% of world stock and it also shares 5 to 8% of the world amphibians, reptiles and mammals. Amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. So here, for in uh, terrestrial ecosystem, first type is forest ecosystem. So this forest ecosystem again divided into five parts: tropical evergreen forest. First part is uh, 
tropical evergreen forest the tropical evergreen forest usually occur in areas receiving more than 200 uh, cm of rainfall so tropical evergreen forest tropical evergreen forest so these are usually occur in areas where receiving more than 200 cm of rainfall so tropical evergreen forest these will are usually occur in the areas which are receiving more than 200 cm of the rainfall so having temperatures of 15 to 30 degrees celsius they occupy 7% of the earth's land surface these trees have great height up to 60 meters so these trees have great height up to 60 meters trees found in these areas are ebony mahogany rosewood rubber and sycamore so in this tropical evergreen forest so trees found in these tropical evergreen forest are ebony mahogany rosewood rubber and sycamore so this type of forest occur in the areas which is receiving more than 200 cm rainfall so next to next forest is tropical deciduous forest tropical deciduous forest so this are the these are the most widespread forest in india so these are, tropical deciduous forests are most widespread forest in india so these are also called as monsoon forest so they receiving the rainfall between 200 cm to 770 cm so these are these areas are receiving the rainfall between 200 cm to 70 cm whereas the tropical evergreen tropical evergreen forest tropical evergreen forest so it is receiving 200 above 200 cm rainfall so above above 200 cm so here tropical deciduous forest so they are receiving rainfall between 200 cm to 70 cm so this is first type this is second type so third type that is it is receiving second type the common most common trees Uh, which are uh, which are available in tropical deciduous forests are uh, teak teak is the most dominant species in the forest so tropical thorn forest uh, so in this region the with less than 70 m in third one 70 cm less than 70 cm less than 70 cm so here the vegetation the vegetation covers a large part of southwestern north america africa south america australia so acacias palms euphro euphorbias and cacti are the main plant species in the tropical thorn forest acacias palms euphorbias cacti are the main plant species under tropical thorn forest trees are scattered and have long roots penetrating deep into the soil to get the water to get the moisture so leaves are most thick and small which are used to minimize the evaporation of the water so leaves of these palms these trees are mostly thick and small so to minimize the evaporation so here the tropical first topic is first forest is tropical evergreen forest so in this more than 200 cm rainfall is there so in the tropical deciduous forest are receiving 200 cm in between 200 cm to 70 cm tropical thorn forest so these are receiving the 70 cm less than 70 cm rainfall so in this Mm, this tropical uh, thorn thorn pot forests are having uh, plants like uh, trees like acacias plant palms euphorbias cacti i know uh, so these are having these are having leaves uh, leaves are mostly thick and small to minimize the water evaporation so this is about uh, tropical thorn forest so fourth one is boreal forest tiger it is also known as boreal forest we know the tiger 
So taiga it is also known as boreal forest or snow forest. It is a biome characterized by conferious forests consisting more mostly of pines, spruces and larches. The taiga it is the world's largest biome apart from the oceans. So countries with boreal forests include Russia, Alaska, Sweden, Finland, Norway and the small regions of Scotland. So the boreal region in Canada almost 60% of the country's land area. Boreal region in Canada almost 60% of country's land area. It shelters more than 85 species of mammals including wood bison, moose, grizzly, beavers and wolves. So this is about boreal forest. Last forest is mangrove forest. So mangrove forest, mangrove it is a shrub or small tree that grows in a coastal saline or brackish water. So these forests are found in areas of coast influenced by tides. So these forests are found in areas of coast influenced by tides. The total mangrove forest area of the world in 2000 was 1,37,800 square kilometers, so spanning with 118 countries and territories. Herons, kingfishers, cormorants, uh, snakes, lizards, spiders, insects, snakes and mangrove crabs thrive on mangrove plants. So in India, it's found in deltas of Ganga, Mahanadi, Krishna, Godavari and Kaveri. So in India, Royal Bengal Tiger Turtles, Crocodiles, Gireals, Snake or the, are also found in this forest. So this is a good mangrove forest that is forest ecosystem. Second ecosystem is on terrestrial ecosystem is desert ecosystem. The desert ecosystem it is defined by the interaction between living, living organism and the climate in which they live means it is a desert ecosystem it is defined defined by the defined by interaction between living organisms and the region and the climate and the environment in which they live so and any other non living influence on habitat deserts are arid regions which are generally associated with warm temperatures however cold deserts also exist so deserts, we know that these are which are generally associated with warm temperatures. So, however, cold deserts also exist. Deserts can be found on every continent, with the largest being located in Antarctica in uh, the Arctic, Northern Africa and the Middle East. So there are four types of desert ecosystems. Sand desert, plateau desert, mountain deserts, cold desert. So desert ecosystem also are divided into four types: sand desert, plateau desert, mountain desert, cold desert. Sand desert and erg. It is a broad. It is a broad, flat area of desert covered. Erg means it is a broad, flat area. Broad, flat area of desert. Covered with wind swept sand, covered with wind swept sand with little or no vegetative cover. So, Arg means it is a broad flat area of desert covered with wind swept, wind, uh, wind swept sand with little or no vegetation cover. So, the term takes its name from the Arabic word Arg. So, so the arc meaning the dune field, the dune field. So the rubs, rub alcohol, rub al alkali desert, rub alkali desert. It is the largest conti contiguous uh, sand desert uh, in in the world. It is the largest sand desert in the world. So the desert covers some. 6,650,000 kilometers square, approximately 85% of the all of the earth mobile sand is found in earths that are greater than 32,000 kilometers square. So, exo, exo are uh, 
also found on the other celestial bodies celestial bodies such as venus mars and saturn moon titan and uh, the largest hot desert in the world uh, that is we know that the sahara which is covering uh, 9 million square kilometers sahara it is covers uh, it covers uh, 9 million square kilometers so second uh, desert is plateau desert in geology plateau it is also called as high plain or table land so it is usually consisting of relatively flat terrain uh, that is raised significantly above the surrounding area uh, often one or more slides with steep slopes so some desert plateau are rivetian rivetian plateau azarito plateau and uh, europe which are present in europe so a large dry barren region usually having sandy or rocky soil uh, and little or no vegetation so it is a plateau desert it is a large dry barren region usually having sandy or rocky soil sandy soil or rocky soil or uh, it is a no it is not having any vegetation little uh, it is having little or no vegetation so water loss to evaporation and transpiration in desert exceeds the amount of precipitation so most deserts average less than 25 cm of precipitation each year so concentrated in short local burst so the desert mountains are mountain range located in west wing west central uh, west central nevada south of the lahontan reservoir lahontan reservoir and north of the town of perinto so the range is located in lyon and churchill countries the range includes cleaver peak at 6711 feet above the sea level in the western part of the range i am desert peak at 6404 feet in elevation so in the eastern part of the chain it do eastern part of the chain this is about plateau desert cold desert cold deserts uh, biosphere reserves it is a biosphere reserve located in the western himalayas region which within himachal pradesh state in north india biosphere reserves are the areas of coastal coastal ecosystems which promote the conservation of biodiversity with its sustainable use so there are over 669 biosphere reserves around the world in a, in over 120 countries so cold deserts are found in antarctic greenland iran pakistan northern and western china so some famous cold deserts are atacama gobi great basin namib iranian takla makan and turkistan so these all are the examples of cold deserts so antarctica antarctica it is the largest cold deserts of the earth largest cold deserts of the earth so next ecosystem is tundra ecosystem tundra ecosystem these are treeless region found in arctic and on the tops of mountains where the climate is cold and windy and rainfall is scant so tundra ecosystem are treeless region so these are the treeless region in arctic and on the tops of mountains where the climate is cold windy and rainfall is scant tundra lands are snow covered for much of much of the year so here tundra lands are snow covered for much of the year until summer brings a burst of wild flowers so tundra consists of predators such as wolves foxes wolves polar bears at the top of the chain predators hunt herbivores so plant eating animals such as carbio lemmings and hares so bear bearberry labrador tree diamond leaf arctic moss arctic willow carbo moss tufted uh, saxifrage so pasku flower so these all are the uh, present in uh, tundra ecosystem tundra ecosystem fourth ecosystem that is post terrestrial ecosystem is grassland ecosystem grasslands are areas where the vegetation is dominated by grasses so where the vegetation it is dominated by grasses 
However, such or rust families can formed along with the variable proportions of legumes like clover and other herbs. Legumes like clover and other herbs. So grasslands occur naturally on all country continents except Antarctica. So these grasslands occur that, uh, in all continents, in all continents except Antarctica. So grasslands are found in most ecoregions of the earth. So for example, there are five terrestrial ecoregion classifications of the temperate grasslands, savannas, shrublands, biome and which is one of the eight terrestrial eco zones of the earth's surface. So for example, there are five terrestrial ecoregion classifications, subdivisions of the temperate grasslands. So they are temperate grasslands, savannas, shrublands of biome which is one of the eight terrestrial ecosystems of the earth's surface. Grassland ecosystems, these are further divided into tropical and subtropical grasslands, temperate grasslands. So, grassland ecosystem again divided into two types, tropical, or, uh, tropical and subtropical grasslands, temperate grasslands. Tropical and subtropical grasslands, so here, these grasslands are classified with the tropical and subtropical savannas and shrublands. So they are widespread in Africa and they are also found, uh, found all throughout South Asia. So here uh, in South America and Australia. So I in the Southern United States. So African savannas occur between forest or woodland regions and grassland regions. African savannas occurs between forest uh, and grassland region. African savannas occur between forest and grassland region. So the average temperature of cold 27 degree centigrade with peaks of 30 degree centigrade in April and October and between 300 to 1500 millimeter of rain per year. So, flora I have found in this region are acacia tree, so bobob and grass, low shrubs and thorns. So, these are the flora found in the tropical and subtropical regions. So, next grassland is temperate grasslands. So, temperate grasslands have hot summers and cold winters. Temperate grasslands so these are having hot summers, cold winters. Summer temperatures can be well over 100 degree Fahrenheit. Summer temperatures uh, are 100 degree Fahrenheit while winter temperatures can be low as minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. Summer temperatures 100 degree Fahrenheit. Winter temperatures are less than minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. So they typically have between 10 to 35 inches of precipitation in a year. So they typically they are having 10 to 35 inches of precipitation in a year. So much of it occurring in the late spring and early summer. So much of it, much of this precipitation can occur in the late spring and early summer. So other animals of this region include deer, mice, jack rabbits, snakes, fox holes, and blackbirds, meadow. Larks, sparrows, quails, hawks, and hyenas. So these all are present in temperate grasslands. So grasslands go by many names. Grasslands go by many names. In the US, Midwest, they are known as prairies. In the US, so these grasslands are having many names. So in the US Midwest, they are known as prairies. In South America, they are called as pampas. Central Eurasian uh, Grasslands are referred as steppes. So while in Africa they are named as savannas. So in Africa they are called as savannas. In Central European grasslands, steppes. So in South America they are called as pampas. Then US Midwest they are called as prairies. So these are the different names of temperate grasslands. So, in this session, I have discussed about the ecosystem definition, scope and importance and types of ecosystem. And thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.